you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to Come on, help me say it. That's all the words. Draw me. Come on, say draw me. I'll come running. I'll come running after you. I want you to. me long how come running come on let's take it up one more time draw me come on lift your hands up all over the building and tell him how come running I need you to draw me, draw me, Lord, and I'll come running. I'll come running. my 
running after you. All I want to be is in your presence, Lord. I'll come. Call me by my name and I'll come round. I'll come round. You may be seated in his presence if you can. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for a divine spirit in this place. Thank you because your voice speaks loud and clear and we will hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Father God, in the name of Jesus, for me, for us, let it be a life-changing and a life-altering experience. Speak the kind of word in this place tonight, for you have sent me with the word. Now, Father, speak it in such a way that it will change us until we will never change back. And I thank you for the divine impartation. I thank you because your glory will be revealed in this place. I thank you because we are not just standing on holy grounds, we are standing on new grounds. I thank you because we are standing in the same building but in another place. Same building but another place. And we reverence you for that. And we don't take for granted. Now that we have gathered together, call us together. Help us not to take for granted our gatherings and our callings. Help us to understand that they are rare that many crowds gather but very few times have you called us together and so we thank you for every person that is in this building we thank you for every person that is in the overflows we appreciate you and I see your Shekinah glory sitting in this place I see the glory cloud hovering in the atmosphere. And we thank you because it shall come down. It shall come down round about our feet tonight. Whew. It shall come down round about our feet tonight. It shall come down round about our feet tonight. And those that are connected to us that are not even in this place shall be changed by the impact of this very building tonight. And we thank you for it. And we thank you in advance for it. We bless your name in Jesus' mighty name. 
Let the people of God say amen. 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 And amen. I honor the Lord for his goodness and his mercy toward me. I honor the Lord for my spiritual father tonight, Pastor Parsley. Profoundly, not just in word only, but in deed. I honor the Lord for my mother being in our midst tonight for Sister Parsley in our absence to Mother Parsley. All the saints of God to Pastor Battle and his wife, all the saints. I don't want to get in trouble and start naming names. Today has been a long day in the spirit realm for me because I rarely accept speaking engagements on my prayer day on Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. prayer because it becomes such a long day in the spirit realm for me. But when I got the message and the call, and one thing I do understand about Pastor Parsley is not, when he calls, it is not an invitation. It is a mandate. And it is a mandate that challenges me and it challenges me in such a way that it sends me into another place when I know that I am being summoned to a place. And so in 5 a.m. prayer this morning, we poured out to God. And so the day is usually a solemn day. But I heard the voice of the Lord speaking. And I have come tonight with a word from the Lord for sure. For sure. Thank you. I'd like to start by saying that we understand that we are on the 100th year. We say that it's the 100th anniversary of Azusa. And so many people have embrace the common idea that the church once experienced a move of God over 100 years ago that impacted the nation, changed our lives forever to the point that we have continued to pursue after that realm and that presence. From the beginning of Azusa, and I'm not going to minister on Azusa, but I have to bring this point out. From the beginning of Azusa, in the middle of the travel of the years as it went by, we were experiencing what I classify as the residue of what had happened during those times and during that era. And so for that reason, it left us traveling to a place and trying to reach for a place. But what I don't think some of us have realized is that when we got to the 100th year anniversary of Azusa, we, we were transformed from just a year-by-year -year experience. So you really can't celebrate something or the anniversary of something unless you are willing to get in the spirit of that thing. And so back in the day, uh, the price that they paid and the sacrifice that they paid, these were people that got in the spirit of what they did. And so the price was great. And so when we get in the hundred year, we find a lot of people celebrating, celebrating and trying to have repeated moments to celebrate the movement of Azusa. But we find very few people embracing the spirit of Azusa. And the spirit of Azusa was a, was, a, was a spirit that was a price paid. A price paid. A price paid. And so in prayer the Lord continues to speak to me in the last couple of months. And he began to say to me that we have... 
we have finished the line. We have finished the line. I'm going somewhere with this tonight, and I need to take my time and say this. We have finished, we have come to a line in the presence of the Lord, and we have come to a line in God to the point that all of what has happened in our lives, if you're in this building tonight, you're in the overflow, wherever you are, all that has happened in your life and all that you have accomplished up until this point, there is nothing else that we will possess and obtain and nothing else that would happen through our lives that will be free. That will be free. I'm not going to get a lot of amens right there, but I'm just going to take my time and just walk in this prophetic anointing because he told me that I would be prophesying these things tonight. The free day, all of what we have gotten, all of what we put on the altar and say, God, uh, I need you to do this and I need you to do that and I need you to make a way out of nowhere and I need you to bring me out and I need you to bring my family out and all of the things that we, that we have interceded for. But yet we still don't see the manifestation of the manifold wisdom of God. That is the many areas of God. We don't still see the miraculous. We hear of things that happen. But the miraculous is not set aside for the famous in ministry. The miraculous is set aside for the everyday person that is willing to pay the price. And so when you start talking about price paying, then you get a different attitude from this generation of the church. Because we don't know anything about paying the price. What we know about is somebody blowing on us and somebody praying for us and somebody standing in the gap for us and, and, and what, we, what, what we understand to be a breakthrough. A breakthrough is what somebody else does for us. And so that's the reason why our breakthroughs are not repeated. We don't see, we don't see repetition in the victory that we walk in. We see, we see moments that we celebrate as isolated events, but we don't see ourselves walking in the power and the real authority of the Holy Ghost to the point that the enemy understands who you are and he obeys you every time you open up your mouth. When you show up, something happens to the atmosphere. I'm talking about, I'm talking about getting beyond words. I'm talking about, I'm talking about coming into a place that your very presence shakes the enemy. Your very presence disturbs something about his plans. That you don't even need to talk. You don't even need to get loud and say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. <laughs> when you show up, he is rebuked. When you walk into the room, he understands who you are and where you came from. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me, but it's okay. I'm talking about the real authority of God. Where we stop playing with the devil. And we stop playing around in the church with the devil. To the point that we recognize that we do have an authority in him when we pay the price. Ha, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this for a minute. Jesus, Jesus, there was a woman in the Bible, I want to take us to, um, I want to take us to 1 Samuel, take us to 1 Samuel, thank you Jesus. There was a woman in the Bible by the name of Hannah who prayed. And I got to just, she prayed a prayer. And it's such a familiar story to all of us, to many of us can just talk about it off the cuff. But this woman, she prayed. And Hannah wanted a son. She wanted a child because she was barren. And she said, Lord, if you, I just, and in fact, she came into the temple year after year and she prayed. And um, in her praying, nothing happened. Nothing happened. She, 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 she did what we call travailed. She travailed in the presence of the Lord. 
She lamented in tears and nothing happened. Nothing happened. And so when the Lord began to show this to me, he began to show it to me like this. He said, where we sit now in the body of Christ, God, I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There has to be a, some kind of agreement between us and God. See, it cannot no longer be, Lord, I need you to do it, and God, I need you to fix it, and Lord, I need you to pay it, and God, I need the down payment, and Lord, I need a car, and my child needs to be saved. See, what happened to Hannah is she prayed for a child, and she prayed for a child. But see, there was something going on at that time. She was being harassed by Penina. And so, and so God's, Lord have mercy, God's mentality for our lives speaks as a parable with this woman. God is not, let me help you with something. God is not interested in jumping in your personal battles with things that you have going on. See, a lot of times we want God to do stuff because, Lord, you know what? They said I'll never have it. They said I would never get it. So God, I need you to fix it. That's not why God wants to fix it. See, <laughs> Hannah was upset because Penina kept messing with her. So she went to the temple and she prayed and she said, God, give me a child. Give me a child. Every time I come up to the temple, this woman vexes me. This woman talks about me. She has children by my husband. I have none. God said nothing until she opened her mouth and said, God, I make a vow to you. Now, what does that mean? It means this, that God recognize this that I need a prophet and you need a son now we can talk about this oh my God oh Jesus I'm not giving you no son just to give you a son because I'm not interested in fulfilling your personal desires. I'm talking to somebody tonight. Unless what you praying for, God has a need for it. There's no connection right there. Because what God is looking for is for somebody to ask him for something that he's going to get the glory out of. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. She, she said, she said, she said, I, I need a son. God said, I need a prophet. She, 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 here you go, here you go. God, I need a car. Well, well, I need somebody to pick up the homeless. Do we have an agreement? Because I'm not just trying to give you no Mercedes so you can look good to the church. I'm not here nobody. God, oh Jesus. God, I need a building. All right, then I need a soup kitchen right here. Can we talk about your new building? Who am I preaching to today? Because, because, because see, we want too much that God don't need. I don't, I don't, Lord Jesus, Father, give me your strength tonight. Lord Jesus, he said heaven was shut up. The voice of the Lord was shut down. He wasn't talking. So God said, here, here it is. Uh, I need to, um, I need to talk. I, I need my voice heard. And so, and so, and so when Hannah said, God, if you give me a son, Perry, she said, she said, I will, I will give him back to you. When she spoke that, Lord have mercy, the priest, oh Jesus, that was in the temple began to recognize that her prayer changed. Lord, what am I talking about? See, because we got this thing backwards, we think pastor going to pray for us. Uh -huh. We think somebody going to give us a prophetic word and it's going to come to pass. Uh -uh. There has to be something that happens in you where you begin to think about the glory of God being revealed in the earth realm. Who am I preaching to right now? When something turns over in you where you no longer want your church just to be a church, but you want God to get the glory when something turns over in you when you just don't want another conference I'm 
I'm not, I, I'm a, I'm, I, I, I got to calm down right here because cause I don't want to, I don't want to take it out there. I would, God, I, I want you to bless us because we have a nine women on fire conference. For what? Well, Lord, I want you to bless me over here because we have a nine seven days ablaze. For what? God, I want you to bless us right now because I just want us to have a 350 voice choir. For what? God, I want you to bless me because, Lord, I want you to give me a ministry. For what? Because the Lord said, is that something that I have a need for? Jesus. Let's talk about this. We're going to talk about this tonight. We're going to talk about this tonight. Because see, that's where, that's where the church is. The church is in the state of gimme, 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 gimme. But then the Holy Ghost is saying, where is your vow? Okay, okay, okay. You don't think you need one. People don't think they... People don't think they need a vow. They don't think they need a vow. They don't think that's necessary. Because they think that's, they think that's for, the, for the Old Testament. Yeah, we, we don't need to. Because see, I hear people say this all the time. And, uh, and you've heard this scripture too. I, I'm going to decree a thing. And it shall come to pass. That ain't what it said. Maybe that's the reason why we decree a lot of stuff that ain't came to pass. Because that's not what it said. It said, you shall pay your vow. Then you shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. This ain't going to be, this ain't going to be easy tonight. And I already, I already know this because... We, we kind of ain't gonna shout a little bit because I gotta, I gotta kind of make this plain because the book of Psalms tells us, watch this, the book of Psalms tells us that you shall, you shall pay your vow that you vowed unto the Lord during your day of trouble. Now see, we gonna sit here and act like we ain't done it. Because a lot of us wondering, well, why is my warfare so heavy? Your warfare is so heavy because you have brought yourself under a curse because when you were in trouble, you made God a vow. Yes, you did. Uh-huh. When you, uh-huh. When you thought Buki was gonna die, uh, you told the Lord, God, if you just pay my son, I'll preach the gospel. Oh, yes, you did. And some of us then got a curse from the original vow. We made a vow to God and we we have not paid the vow. And so, Lord Jesus. Pastor, so, um, Pastor Parsley, so we sit and we say, and we say, well, what do you mean? I made a vow to God, but what? what yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. 85% of the people that are in this building tonight are vow breakers. Oh, God, I know he sent me with this word because he told you to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and pray. And you did it for the first six months and haven't done it yet. I'm not hearing nobody preach back to me right there. He told you. He wanted you to fast two days out of the week. And you told God yes. And you've been eating ever since. Oh, you're not going to like me tonight, but that's okay. Because what God wants to remind you of is that you can't go any further and he's not gonna do another thing until you pay what you have found oh Jesus oh Jesus oh God oh God let's 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 can we please talk about this why is this is important why is this important why is a why is the vow? Because I know some of y'all sitting there because I'm, I got a curve for you. So don't, don't, don't get lost in it. Because I, I see some of y'all spirits sitting there. Well, I ain't never made God no vow. I got something for you right there. I got something for you right there. Well, I ain't never made God no vow. Hey. See, see, uh, Jesus. See, the Bible said Jonah. Jonah. Ooh, Jesus. God spoke some things to Jonah and uh, 
told Jonah what he wanted him to do. But see, let me read something to you. Let me tell you why a vowel is important, because some of y'all, some of y'all don't understand this. Okay, so then I went to the dictionary and I looked up the word vow. God, I love you. The word vow means, listen very carefully, an earnest promise or pledge that commits one to perform a certain act or behave in a particular way. It's an earnest promise or pledge that causes one to commit one to perform a certain act or behave in a particular way. Now, what does that have to do with? What does that have to do with a vow? Because the derivative of the word, once you look up the word vow, the very next word underneath that word is vowel, V-O-W-E-L. Now, the first dictionary uh, definition says, a speech, a sound produced by the relatively free, free, free passage of breath through the larynx and all cavity, forming the most prominent sound of a syllable, which means when a vowel is going on, it is, it is the breath and the sound that comes out of a person's larynx. It is the thing that causes the word to sound like a word. Oh, Jesus, right there, right there. So if a vowel is, is, is something that causes something to perform and act in a certain way, and then we say that we need a word from the Lord and in order to hear a word it has to come through the breath that means if you don't have a vow on the table you ain't got a word oh see see I'm helping somebody right there because we got too many people say the Lord said the Lord said the Lord ain't told you nothing the Lord said because you know what he can't speak he can't make a sound without a vow without a vow you say well I haven't made a vow but let me surprise you he has made one over your life before you were formed in your mother's womb oh Jesus Oh, Jesus. So, but before I was, what do you mean he made, he made a vow? And Perry, what do they mean by he made a vow over me? Okay, so that means I can hear God speaking unless I have made a vow or I have been vowed. Oh, Jesus. See, Jonah, let me make this clear. Jonah got vowed on. Okay. He said, I want you to go to Nineveh. And I want you to prophesy. Lord Jesus. And the Bible kept on repeating this. But Jonah kept trying to run from the presence of the Lord. He kept trying to flee out of the presence of the Lord because he didn't like the prophetic. He kept trying to flee because the prophetic anointing corrects him and chastises him. He didn't like what he saw because the prophetic anointing arrests him. Jonah didn't like being controlled by another spirit. He didn't want to be in the perfect will of God. He wanted to do his thing. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. See, we got a plan, but God got a plan for us. Oh, Jesus. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Jonah said, I'm not going to Nineveh. I'm going on over here to Tarshish. I'm going to pay my own way, and I'm going to get up here, and I'm going to go on to Tarshish, and I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not getting ready to go prophesy. I'm not getting ready to go be no prophet. And I know how he felt because I felt the same thing. See, a lot of us, we got a mantle on our life, and we don't want to acknowledge that mantle because it's too rough. It costs too much. It's too painful. It's too expensive. And so rather than to obey God, you find yourself doing some sideline. Uh-huh. The Holy Ghost said, preach, pray, and prophesy. You start a soup kitchen and still say, well, I'm still in the will of the Lord. No, you're not. You're not in the perfect will of God. You in Tarshish. Who am I talking to right now? Come on. You ain't got to say amen because it's all right. It's a prophetic word. You ain't supposed to say amen this time. You're supposed to sit there and just receive it because I know God sent me with this word. You cannot do it your way. You can't do what you want to do. In this last hour, you got to make sure that what you are doing is not church stuff, but it is the perfect divine will of God. I'm not getting nobody 
to say nothing right there. Because, you know, we can't find the perfect will. We can't find the perfect will because, because there's too many things that, that we are offered in the cosmetic level of the church that helps us not to find the perfect will. You don't hear what I'm saying to you. See, a lot of times the Lord said, I want you to be an intercessor. And then we get on the praise team. There's so much activity in the house of God that we can't find the perfect will. But I'll tell you, when you done found the perfect will, it hurts every day. When you done found the perfect will, you can't sleep at night. When you done found the perfect will of God, you find yourself crying more than you find yourself laughing. When you find the perfect will of God you can be in the mall and that spirit will arrest you it'll run you out of the mall it'll send you back to your car speaking in tongues when you find the will of God you are obsessed controlled dominated by his presence Dom wait, wait. you know I see people I see people all the time you know and they look at me and say well, well you know what she she really preached hard. She, she, I don't have a choice. No, I, 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 I mean, because see, we think, we think we have a choice in this. We think we have a choice to just do whatever we want to do. Listen, when he got, can I just, can I just help you with something? The Bible said that when he disobeyed God, God prepared a fish, Lord Jesus. What does that mean? He prepared a fish. How does a fish suck up a man, take him to the bottom of the ocean? You don't hear me. Not suck in no water. God sits and moves his internal organs out of the way and give a man permission to live down in the belly of the fish in the bottom of the water and not suck his breath out. Who am I talking to? See, that thing you think that's going to kill you, that trial you're going through, it ain't going to kill you. It was prepared for you. You know what? You can get free right now. You can get free right now. If you just go ahead and admit it, it was prepared for you. You ain't gonna die in this trial. That's why can't nobody pray it off you. That's why I don't care how much you say a seed and speak in tongues, it still won't break because it was prepared for you. Oh, Jesus. Ooh. Lord Jesus. This, this is a, this kind of, this, this, Pastor Parsley. It was prepared for him, and then he did like us. He started all that drama praying. God, I love you. God, you wonderful. God, you so mighty. God, you awesome. You the God that sit high and look low. You the God that works wonders. And he didn't hear nothing from God. But the Bible said that the minute he spoke and said, God, I will pay my vow. The very next scripture said, then the voice of the Lord spoke to the fish and the fish brought him up. Who am I talking to? God, listen, listen, listen. You don't need no 21 day fast. You don't need no prayer line. You need to tell God tonight, I will pay my vow. Then the Lord will speak on your behalf. Jesus. Let me just say this. Let me. Sit down for a minute. Just, just sit down. Just sit down. Just sit down. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got to tell you this. Uh, uh, I'll pay my vow. Then the Lord spoke. Then he spoke to the fish. And the fish spit him up. Watch this. Lord Jesus. Lord God. See, let me tell you how serious this is. Because y'all think, y'all think that this is just a game. But there's a game that they play in the world. Uh-huh. See, let me tell you something. The, 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 the next definition says D-O-W-E-L, vow. Vow. English people. A-E-I-O-U. Vow. You don't have one of those. You ain't got a word. See, there's a game that they play in the world called Wheel of Fortune. Y'all ain't saying that. And so Vanna White walks and the word is wealth. So she says ding W, ding L, ding T, ding H. But guess what? 
If you want to complete the word, you got to buy the vow. Oh, come on, somebody. The vow ain't free. Come on here, church. I don't hear nobody talking to me. The vow ain't free. The vow costs you something. And then the people say, I'll take an E for a thousand. I'll take an A for 2,000. Have you noticed when they get to the paying of the vows, they increase the money high because they're confident in what the word is. We can't get nobody to make no vow because we're not confident in what the word is. I'm not hearing nobody saying that. Have anybody ever had a word spoken over your life when you confident on God's will for your life? When you know that no weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper. You don't mind paying for the vow because I'm sure that if I pay for it. I'm, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to get. I'm going to. I'm going to get something, but let me help you with something. Let me help you with something. When I said he has vowed a vow over your life, I didn't ask to be who I was. See, let me help the church with something. We all said we under the power of Jesus Christ, and we, Jesus Christ lives in us. Well, let me say this to you. Sam's, Sam's a mama. Same thing. She wasn't begging for no child. They came to her. You're going to get pregnant. And let me give you some rules about this. Because this is a natural right anointing. Lord, I'm talking right here. I'm talking right here. Because, see, we're the church without rules. Lord Jesus. That's why we, that's why we low, we low, we low in the anointing and we low in demonstration of miracles because we the church without rules, you know, because none of us, none of us operate under our Nazarite anointing. They said, Samson, Samson going to come into the world. Don't cut his hair. He can't drink no strong drink. There's some things that you can't do to walk in this power. There's some things that you can't handle to walk in this power. And you don't want to be told that tonight, but if I got to go all the way up to the balcony and over in the overflow room, I'll get in your face and tell you that the next level of the anointing that's going to rest on people in this hour it's going to be resting on people that's got Nazarite vows it's going to be resting on people that will speak out of their spirit and say I can't touch that I can't watch that I can't handle this I can't go here I gotta pray every day at six I can't be in the mall I'm under a Nazarite anointing I can't break it oh Jesus oh Jesus oh Jesus I started I started watching this thing. I said, God, what are you talking about? He said, Samson got off in there. And he said, I said, you can't touch that. You can't handle that. And then we let people embarrass us. We let people shame us, Lord Jesus. Uh-huh, people talk about, yeah, she always praying. She always, she always, every time I turn around, she talking about prayer. Every time I turn around, she talking about, she talking about the threshing flow. That's my Nazarite vow. That's why I'm still here in the kingdom. That's why out of everything that the devil has thrown my way, he has not been able to take me out. Because when there is a vow over your life, you are divinely protected by God. He fights your battles. He wars on your behalf. Who am I preaching to? He said, you don't, you don't need to fight in this one. You need to fight in this one. He said, okay, Samson, you got a Nazarite vow on your life. We don't understand that. We don't understand that. Y'all, let me help you with something. We don't get that. When you, when you look at Jephthah, Jesus, Jephthah said, if you give me the battle, then the first thing that comes out of my door, I will bow it to you, Lord Jesus, and out runs his daughter, his only, I'm going to help somebody right here. How do you know? How do you know? How do you know when you come to the place? See, this is a place of maturity. Jesus, we're going through the crossroad right now. This is where the road splits tonight. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. This is where some of y'all will go to the left. 
And some of y'all would leave here and go to the right because this is the level of your only. See, when Abraham got to a level where he recognized that God had a mantle on his life, God required not he picked 50 sons, he only had one. He said, walk your only up and sacrifice it. Abraham said, wait a minute. This is all I got. This is my only. He said, that's, that's the level I'm calling for. Jephthah said, this is my only daughter. That's the level he called him for. Samson was the only child. That's the level he called him for. Samuel. Jesus, Samuel. See, I got to help you with this because when the Lord vows a vow over your life, and I got to make this plain to you, and you got to hear this, that your vow has spiritual longevity in it. It's not about you preaching. It's not about you praying. It's not about you prophesying. It's about all of the things that's connected to what God is doing in your life. It's about all the people that's connected 10 years from now. God is doing what he's doing in you now for 20 years from now. Who am I preaching to right there? It's not about right this minute. I'm going to tell you why. Let me tell you why. Samuel's mother said, I'll bow this vow to you, God, if you give me this son. I will give him back to the temple. And everybody said that was just so powerful. She gave him back to the temple. That baby lived in the temple. He walked, watch this. He walked in the temple. Commentary say he was three years old. His mama was going up every year to visit him. Once a year, she would make him new robes to put on because she was trying to help him to maintain the fact that you're chosen. See, that's what's wrong. We don't have any more checkers in the spirit. You don't have nobody to look at you and say, stop what you're doing because you are chosen. God, I wish I had somebody to talk to me in here. You don't have anybody to speak into your life and we too busy trying to be somebody that we done forgot that we ain't nothing. Oh, who am I talking to right now? We can't stand to be corrected and chastised, but I'm gonna tell you something. You need somebody to hold you captive to your ephod. You need somebody to tell you what your purpose was. Because let me tell all of y'all something. You don't have a reason to be on this earth unless God has a need for you to be here. You ain't here just because you were born. You were here because there's purpose in your spirit. And God's been wrestling with you all of your life trying to get his purpose out. But tonight it stops here. God is saying, choose you this day. Which God you're going to serve? It ain't no more. We don't have, I'm preaching hard. We don't have people to say to us, what are you doing in the choir? Yeah. You don't belong in the choir. We don't have people to say, what are you doing on the deacon board? Didn't God call you to preach? I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. And that's the reason why we don't stand up and say stuff. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. We got a lot of punks in Christendom. We don't have people no more that can stand up and declare, God called me to be a prophet. God called me to be a preacher. God called me to be a dreamer. God called me to be an intercessor. We want to keep it undercover so we can vacillate and do what we want to do and not be held accountable. But after this night, you better tell somebody about your vow because you're about to get your lineage in trouble. You're about to get your children and your children's children and your children's children in a whole lot of trouble by you denying your vow. Somebody said, well, how do you, how do you, what are you talking about? Samuel, Samuel got a bow out on him. But uh, it wasn't about Samuel being three years old. Pastor, it was about Lord Jesus. It was about Samuel being sought after by Saul. Uh huh. It was about Samuel stripping the anointing off of Saul. It was about uh, Samuel learning how to discern the presence of the Lord. So when he got to Jesse's house, he wouldn't use his eyesight to make a spiritual divine decision. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. See, a lot of times some of y'all think that you're suffering because you're going through in the ministry. And don't nobody recognize me. And I can't get myself together. But I'm going to tell you something. You're not being held, held hostage. You're in training. He's trying to teach you how to recognize the devil. Why are you trying to fight the devil in the choir? No, no, no. You don't fight. You learn. He's trying to teach you the spirit realm. Because when Samuel got to Jesse's house, they was tall and fine. They was elegant in speech. They had muscles. But because he was vowed on, because he lived in the temple, he 
was able to say, but I sent in my spirit that there is another one somewhere. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. It wasn't about Samuel's mother getting a child. It was about Samuel going to find the lineage of Jesus Christ. It was about Samuel speaking out David and said, through these loins shall come Jesus Christ. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So your yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. It ain't about you being recognized. Your yes, Lord, that already ran down the road 10 years from now. Your yes, Lord, that already jumped into 2020. Who am I talking to right now? Your yes, Lord, is already in your tomorrow. Your yes, Lord. Lord uh, is already working something out uh, in your children. Uh, you ain't got to worry uh, that they still in the bar. You ain't got to worry that they still on crack. Uh, you just keep your vow. We trying to do what only the vow can do. That, that, that just said something right there. We trying to do what only the bow can do. When he bows over your life, you say, well, I didn't make no bow, but you gotta pay it. Come on, Jesus. I, I didn't ask to be no preacher. Too bad. You gotta pay it. Cause that's the only purpose he has for you. Who am I preaching to right there? I told you, we, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not worried about you shouting. I'm not worried about you shouting. I'm worried about you trying to make God keep his word when you won't keep yours. And that's what my concern is. My concern is all the demands and the decrees that you declare toward God. But he can't trust you to walk around across the street and keep your word. I'm talking about a church that have no integrity. I'm talking about a church that you can't trust their word. I'm talking about a church that will tell God, yes, Lord, this morning. I said to the people in prayer today, we had over 2,000 people in 5 a.m. prayer. And when I got there, the air conditioner was broke. And they was acting a little funny because it was hot in the church. And I saw them trying to pray and fan. And I told the people, I said, let me tell you something. You ain't been called to prayer. Because you know what? Prayer is not based upon whether or not we got heat. It ain't based upon whether or not we got air conditioner. It ain't based upon whether or not the, the microphone is working right. When you call to pray, you pray in season and out of season. Who am I talking to? Y'all, we looking for the comfort. We looking to find a way to be comfortable with the will of God. But the vow that's over your life, you're never going to be comfortable. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. No. Because when you turn one corner and you think you're walking in that, he's going to tap you on your shoulder. And how do we know we're behind in bows? Because we're comfortable. We're comfortable in who we are. We're comfortable in who the saints say we are. Oh, that's why I need a bond. Oh, she powerful. Oh, honey, she got a word. Comfortable. That's when the Lord tapped me and said, all right, another vow. Because all that stuff you asking me for, you ain't got enough money for that. You ain't got enough on the table for that. And they said, no, no, no. Did you check the price tag for this? I said, God, I said, what are you talking about? I said, I do 5 a.m. prayer. I do it on Tuesdays in New York. I fly out of there and I go do it on Sunday mornings at my church. I said, God, I preach across the country. He said, that's your reasonable service. But now it's time to make a vow. He said, don't remind me of what you're doing for me. Because that's what I called you to do. But I want you now to make a vow. That's the vow that was made over you. I said, well, okay. Then I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just think of something that I can give God. I said, all right, I won't eat cake. He said, no, uh -uh. I want this vow for a whole year. I said, well, all right, well, I won't eat cake. I won't eat cake for a year. And he said, no, I want you to go back and check your prayer request. I want you to go back to get to your prayer list and all the stuff you got down there and people you want me to heal from cancer and doors you want me to open. No, you're going to have to make another vow. By the time God got through with me, I wasn't hardly eating nothing. He said, because what people want to do. They want to bring me what they can bring me. They don't want to bring me what I'm asking them for because there's no sacrifice in it. Oh, come on somebody. You say praise the Lord and they praise God till they get tired. But that ain't the praise that count. The praise that count is the one you give him when you don't feel like it. The praise that count is the one that you give him when your back is hurting, when your feet is hurting, when your body is tired. That's a sacrifice of praise. That's the one God give you a check on. 
Oh, see, we, see, I'm talking. Pastor Woodson, I'm talking to a church. I'm talking to a church that don't know nothing about that. That don't know nothing of nothing. Don't know nothing about the sacrifice of praise because the Bible said that when God spoke the word to Hannah, she wasn't pregnant yet. But what she did was she started praising God like she had lost her mind. You don't hear what I'm saying to you. You don't hear what I'm saying? Because she had a bow on the table. See, the bow cancels out the spirit of doubt and worry. Because when you know what you got on the table, you can turn your back on it and walk away. And you ain't got to see it happen next year. Because you already know, I got some on the table. God can't fail me now. Because you know what? I done stuck a bow in his face. And if I know God like I know God, God is a God that honors vows. God's got a thing for vows. God's got respect for vows. God moves for people that know how to make him a vow. God moves because you understand the power of a word. Somebody said, you know what? You know what? You know what? I'm believing God. I'm believing God for my next level. But I'm going to tell you something. He said, okay, here it goes. No sugar, no flour, no chicken, no beef. No pork, no sodas, no crab legs, no shrimp, no lobster tails. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. I said, God, I said, well, what, you, what are you doing? He said, because I want you to give me something. I want you to give me something that hurt. And I want you to give it to me for a whole year. And I don't want your spirit to regret you gave it to me. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me right there. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there. But God, I love you because you told me we weren't going to shout tonight. Jesus. He said, I want you to come to another level of commitment. Because this thing that you operating in right now, that's old manner. The anointing that all of us is under in this building tonight, it's old. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Y'all don't want to talk to me. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's your preacher's anointing. It's your evangelist's anointing. It's your, it's your, you know what, I, 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 I get up before the Lord every morning at 4 o'clock and, you know, and I just kind of talk to the Lord. That one done got stale. Uh huh. He looking for another one. He looking for 4 a.m. And he looking for 12 midnight. He looking for something else because there's a fresh word. There's a fresh wind. There's a fresh movement. Who am I talking to? And that movement is coming with sacrifice. That movement is coming. It's going to cost you something. That's why when David got to Ornan's floor and Ornan said, I'll give it to you. David said, I can't take it like that because this is the spot I'm going to build the temple on. I got to pay for it. Who am I talking to in this place tonight? No, 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 no. We want free. We want free. Give it to me, give it to me, show it to me, show it to me but God is saying that the next level you got to be willing to pay a price for it because when people see you walk in it you're going to be able to say nobody gave this to me, nobody handed me this, didn't nobody blow on me and all of a sudden something happened, I laid up before God I paid a price for it I made a vow to the Lord and I did not take it back I made a vow to him how many people in this building tonight, you could honestly say, and be honest, Providence, I haven't been paying my vow. I haven't been doing what the Lord has directly told me to do. I'm not talking about permissive. See, because I'm like pastor, I'm, I'm beyond all that. I'm beyond all that about the church responding, oh, and, and it was this, and we shout, and we this, and we that. Because I'm watching something. We ain't getting nowhere. See, I'm not, that's why I told my people, no, 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 stop the music. Because we ain't getting nowhere. Come on, he can put me, he can put me in C sharp. And I, oh yeah, I can go for it. I can preach. I can, oh, see, oh, all that. But we ain't getting nowhere like that. Because what that does, we got people hiding behind C sharp. Uh, the church is hiding behind A flat. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. We praise God because we hear a note. But we're not coming from between the pews and being honest with God and getting ourselves in a place that God can use us anytime, any place, anywhere. We're not making a difference. Forget about your neighborhood. Don't nobody in your house believe you saved for real. That's why you got Sister Watermelon praying for your husband. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me right there. I ain't getting nobody to say nothing, but that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That's why you got 
Sister Rudy Tootie, praying for your child because you ain't got power to break it off of his life. Who am I talking to today? How can God give you something that you birthed out of your belly and you don't have the authority in the spirit realm to tell the devil, take your hands off of my child. The seed of my body shall be blessed. Because, Pastor Woodson, come here. Come here. Because this is what we do. Stand here. Turn to the audience. We hide. We hide behind his preaching. Come here, Pastor Perry. We hide. We hide, and we call that anointed. And we said, wow, he's so anointed. And so the mentality is he anointed, we anointed. All of us is anointed. Boy, Perry really preach. Wow. He really know that Bible. He's anointed. Camp meeting was powerful until you get home. And Perry is gone home. And you can't find your DVD. You don't have no power. You Samson. You shaking. The way you always shook, but ain't nothing happening because you got your hair cut. You broke the bow. Oh, Jesus. Pastor, ain't nobody saying nothing. Where's the church? Where's the church? Pastor, the battle of the church doesn't left. I don't hear nobody in this building how is responding to me. Pastor Perry, because I know we do it. We've been on consecrations and they're temporary. They 21 days touching God and the rest of the 300 God don't know you you have no consistency in prayer that's why you have no consistency in deliverance I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me but I'm gonna tell you something like Jonah you can run from this presence and we can no longer create an atmosphere for you that entertains you the body of Christ has got to turn our sanctuaries back to the place where it was originally built for the sanctuary and the temple was never built for the people it was built for the presence of the Lord they did not Perry correct me if I'm wrong they did not put a menorah in the temple for the people to come in and say they got a menorah let me help you with something they didn't march the ark of the covenant in and set it up so the people can we come this far by faith for the people to say y'all ain't standing under me y'all ain't standing under me they didn't they didn't build the platform how do I shot the reason why it is a platform it wasn't built for us to preach on it it was built as a representation of the presence of the Lord so anybody that stands up here and preach and there is no presence on you you are illegal in the temple and you are violating the very platform of the Holy Ghost who am I talking to right now anybody that plays an instrument or sings in the choir on the platform if you your life is not pure and holy unto God. You are violating the temple. You are like a stench that's going out of the temple and it turns to entertainment. And when you entertain, the people respond to entertainment, but their lives don't change. Let me just, let me just, let me just, let me just say this. So, it was built for the presence of the Lord because that was the vow that he made for the temple. Y'all didn't hear me. It said the presence of the Lord was so strong that uh, the priest could not stand, couldn't. Let me help you with something. Call me off. Call me retarded. But I'm looking for the time and the place that none of us, that
that we would come to a camp meeting and every time we get up to preach the next person flies in they take the mic and out under the power of God because the glory of God is in the house I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there don't tell me we need another preach word we got so much word in us right now we would throw up and vomit what we're lacking in the presence of the Lord we don't have enough of his presence you get people in his presence and demon spirits will be broken cancer will come out who am I talking to backsliders will come back home drugs will be broken HIV will be healed in the service I'm preaching too hard. Pastor. The vow was made. And I heard Micah up here. And he was saying, come on. But I ran across something in the Bible. I ran across something about the tabernacle. And it says, Pastor, that the glory of the Lord in Chronicles you know it. He said he was revealed in the darkness of his holiness. I said in the darkness of his holiness. What is you talking about, God? He said in the darkness of his holiness was my glory revealed. It said, and when the people stood, it said the glory cloud hit the room until the room went dark. Y'all ain't saying that. See, we got the thing backwards. We tell me, God, I want, us, I want you to die, die. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. That's what that is. That's what the hell is you going through. It is his glory being revealed because it's not really the glory of God until you're in the dark. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there. I'm, I, I'm not hearing nobody. To, no, 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 no. It ain't no real praise until you're in the dark. It ain't no vow. See, that's what I'm talking about. We break our vow because we made a vow to God that we would serve him, that we would worship him until something hits our life that we don't understand. Then we got to prop you for 20 minutes to get you on your feet. But you better not sit here and break that vow because you didn't make the vow because everything was going well. You made that vow in the midst of your trouble. In the midst of... In the, oh Jesus. I'm, I'm through. I'm through. You know, that, 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 that... See, when you start coming... And this is what he started talking to me about in prayer. He said, you think everybody's saying amen? You think everybody think you so awesome? Step into your real anointing. Mm -hmm. Step into the real prophetic office. No, 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 no. See, because we play with this church. See, we played with it, mother. Like, baby, stand up right there. The Lord is telling me to tell you that I see you, honey. God's giving me to bless your life. There's a great anointing coming down on your life. The Lord, uh, 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 I got to answer my bow because what he's starting to do is take the mask off of my eyes and said, walk in your real prophetic anointing where you are walking places and call people out and say, you, God said, stop fornicating. Do it again and you are drop dead. I'm talking about the real glory of God. I can't hear nobody talk to me in here. I'm not hearing nobody talk because this church cannot stop. You think you want the prophetic? You can't stand the prophetic. You can't stand a real prophet if they walked in this door. Because what we call prophecy is stuff. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing to me. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing to me. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing to me. This is, some of y'all just stuck right now. Mm -hmm, you stuck right now. All the people in here that are talking about they got the Holy Ghost? You mean all these people in here is filled with the power of the Holy Ghost? Somebody ain't got the Holy Ghost. Perry, you mean to tell me all these people in here, 3,000 people in the overflow room, got the Holy Ghost? And you can jump up and sense the spirit of the person next to you and slap that demon out of them. You got the Holy Ghost and you don't even know the lady that's sitting next to you is dying of cancer. You got the Holy Ghost and you don't even know the man behind you is suffering with HIV. Something is wrong. Because when you break your vow, it clouds your vision. Samson, when
when he, when he broke it, he wasn't supposed to eat nothing unclean. And he was on his way somewhere and killed a lion, came back through, and there was honey forming in the carcass of the lion. And he ate the honey. He didn't tell his mother them. When he ate the, the filth, they clouded his judgment. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. All of a sudden, he want the wrong woman. He want the wrong place. He want to be in the wrong place. And the Bible said he came home and fed it to his mother and his father. And when they ate it, it clouded their vision. And you don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about God cleaning up the vision of the fathers and the mothers so that this church will not die. Because we can no longer come to church and perform and just have church. We need fathers and we need mothers in the spirit. We need people that's getting ready to govern our lives and to put a check in our spirit. We need people to say, Protect your anointing if it costs your life. Don't give up the God that's on your life. That's all you have. Oh, Perry, people don't value. I'm coming to a place of valuing. Let me just minister this to you. Valuing this thing that God has given me to the point that it ain't about no money. I don't want to, I just don't want it. I don't want to take it nowhere that's going to taint it. I don't want it to be around nobody that's going to mess it up. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. I wish I had a church in here tonight, but it's okay. I don't want to be in a speaking engagement just to be preaching somewhere. Because, because it, may, it may affect what I have. You know what? The, 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 the older I'm getting, the more I'm recognizing. As I look around the nation, it ain't a lot of you left. Oh, let me prophesy this tonight. Pastor, it ain't a lot of you left. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right there. Look around. Look around the whole nation. Look around the whole world. It's not a lot of people that is left that is carrying an anointing of the old time way. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there. I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody to say something. It's, it's, it's a it's a handful. People don't they don't want to preach to old time way preachers Lord Jesus we don't want to press in sister battle because we don't want to sweat our suits out we don't want to step up our gators y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying to you I wish I had somebody to talk back to me I wish I had somebody to talk back to me but the priests was the ones that showed the people how to worship God it was the priests that showed the people how to be broken in the presence of the Lord don't you fool yourself Perry everybody ain't got what you got and so people oh Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm. everybody ain't got what you got pastor and it just as humble as I can and with everything that's in me I believe that God sent you on a journey I believe he sent you on a journey I believe he sent you on a journey to stand for more clarity but let me tell you something while you were gone we missed that thing that's on you thank you Jesus because there's something that sits on you that makes the whole body of Christ nervous. We missed Lester Summerall in you. We missed it. And for a while, the oil of the anointing wasn't pouring because you thought maybe there was enough people that still had the sound. But, but you got the lyrics. You got the, you got the legacy in your spirit. He kind of was shot at my shot at my hand at the shot at you have the thing God has called you look around this country there are many preachers that are preaching but few are imparting few are mantling few all of those men that's lined up against that wall with those swords in their hands God said go back and get them and pour down in them because we got to save this church because it's headed for a shipwreck We missed you. We missed you. We missed the rebuke. We missed the fire. 
Lord Jesus. We missed you. Because every year when you call me here, God sends me in the place of the prophetic. Thank you, Jesus. We missed you. My God from Zion is in this place. My God from Zion. You were like our last hope. If we're going to see any of what Lester Summerall them did, you can't let us down. Who else got it? Name me one preacher in this country that have been touched and poured into as many mantles as you have. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Y'all ain't got to talk back. I told you we don't have to shout tonight, but I didn't come to make a shout. I came back to get out of lineage. I came back to tell the devil that he is a liar. I came back to speak strength back in the pastor parsley spirit. I came back to decree that your job ain't over. I came to decree that you can't turn the church over to nobody. I came to decree that you can't retire. Your job has just begun. You better shout in this place. No, I don't hear you shouting. As humble as I know how, as humble as I know how, as humble as I know how, Dad, Dad, as humble as I know how, I hear your spirit said, I need to get away. I need a vacation. I need to go somewhere for about six months and nobody bother me. I love my wife and I love my kids, but I need a break. But the Holy Ghost told me to tell you that that ain't what you need. You're getting a revival in the spirit because even when you used to go on vacations, you would still be preaching in your mind. You would still be preaching in your spirit because it is your livelihood. Revival is your life. Revival is your life. Revival is the blood that runs through your stream. If you don't get revival, you will die. If you don't have a breakthrough, you can't survive. And God said that tonight we're going to shout in this place until your blood starts reviving you. We're going to shout. Go
got to speak this as a prophet. I got to speak it because I saw it. Pastor, if you got to sit in a chair and preach, you are taking a set at a boshala masandaranas. into the next dimension you are ushering us out of the 100 year anniversary and into the move that's going to affect this in time and the enemy is trying to make you weary but God needs you tonight man of God and I say it as my as my dearest father to make him another vow that with your last breath you won't let us die That if you got to preach sitting down because God said a fresh anointing is coming on you man of God to some days you're gonna walk in church and you ain't gonna have to preach but when you hit the platform the glory of God is gonna drop in the building you're headed into your most easiest season you just in travail right now but you cannot let us die oh Jesus Oh, Jesus. 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 Hold on a minute. I'm hearing something. You cannot train anybody to take your place because they don't have what you have. You can train them to minister, but they can never take your place because brethren, Jesus, have mercy. Pastor Battle, you can never leave his side. Pick him up, brothers. He cannot, his feet can't touch the floor. And God said, carry him and bring him right back here to the spot. This is the spot that your father prophesied to you. You can never leave this spot. This is the spot that he poured the oil of the anointing, that he poured his mantle that was on his life on you. And I hear the Holy Ghost said that he has not found anybody yet, but you that is worthy to receive that mantle, therefore you got to keep it. This spot. I don't know about y'all right now, but if you got a ministry, if you got a ministry in this building and you know God has called you to something, y'all looking at me. But what I need in this building and what the Holy Ghost need is an old fashioned two minutes. See, y'all don't understand what I'm saying. An uh, old-fashioned where you loosen up your tie and you take off your jacket. No, see, I wish I had somebody to go with me because I'm going to tell you something. Restoration is about to hit this church. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. I said restoration is about to hit this building. Restoration is about to hit the overflow. The old-time church is about to be launched in the atmosphere. It's going to be noise abroad all over this church that the church is not dead. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Loosen up your tie. Take your jacket off. That's what he told me to tell you, brothers. If, 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 you, if you ain't got too much pride, loosen up your tie. Take your jackets off. And for about two minutes, Pastor, we going back to the old time way. We going back to the way it was when Lester Summerall was living. We going back to the way it was when we didn't have no fancy organs and no pianos. But we cried out to God. Everybody 
anybody in here just start shouting out to God because God gonna give your spirit a drink hey shake it
shout because we're driving something not out of this building but we're driving a spirit out of the kingdom of heaven come on somebody we're driving a spirit out of this church now shout 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 We're getting ready to have a five minute revival. Did you hear what I said? We're getting ready to have a five minute revival. And God said that when we start shouting, we are going to drive a spirit out of the church that says we don't want the sanctified way we're going to drive that demon out of the church that says we don't want to praise until we get a breakthrough we're going to drive that demon out of the church that says it's a new age church and that that's the old time way but I hear the Lord saying if you shout tonight revival is going to break out in your house it's going to break out in your church now give God a praise the robe that I have on is the robe that the Holy Ghost transformed and switched me over in the anointing he had to take me to Africa to redefine who I'm supposed to be he had to show me what I have allowed people to make me and who I was supposed to be. Thank you, Jesus. And he said to me, concerning you, men of God, we gotta keep hollering over people's lives until we recreate people with the same tenacity you don't hear what I'm saying when we get through praising God this next time two mantles are going to drop in this building the one that's on me and the one that's on him is going to fall in this house
and you think the power of God is on your life. Preachers, you think you've been preaching. You ain't seen nothing yet. Women of God, you think you got a ministry. You ain't seen nothing yet. Because I hear the Holy Ghost say, it's going to fall in a double portion form. You're going to get double of what we have. I was in the back and God spoke something to me I said Lord I came out here and I looked around and I didn't see what the Lord had showed me and we usually I travel and I bring my one robe and when she undid the thing she said there's two robes there's two robes and God started talking to me he said, your daughter gets this rope. Come here, baby. I didn't see it when I first got in here. But he said, just like Samuel was robed in an ephod when he was young, he had to be repeatedly and constantly reminded that there was a vow spoken over his life. She represents the church in transition. I want you to hear this. And as Pastor Parsley and I dress her, you break out and start praising God because he's pulling the garment down on the church tonight I wish I had somebody in here I wish I had somebody in here I don't know if I can stand I don't know if I can stand I don't know if I can stand literally stand a month ago a month ago hell hell came against my daughter and my wife and I took her alone and we laid hands on her and we rebuked and we screamed I, I can't describe to you what we did and she began to scream out of her belly Daddy, all this against me is to try to get to you. And up out of my spirit came, no, everything that comes against me is to try to get to you. It's trying to get to her. It's not about me. My vow's not about me. We've got to make a generational transfer. There's a transition.
Samuel was required to do. Was to confront the old system. Which would not see and therefore could not see. What you will not see, you cannot see. Eli's star has set, and Samuel's star is rising. Samuel made a mistake he so understood spiritual authority that even though Eli was in sin Samuel still heard the voice of God through it and when God first spoke to Samuel he went and checked with the old system You don't know what you've asked for. I have checked with the old system my last time. And the last time Samuel walked out of Eli's presence, Eli knew that Samuel was given the word to rebuke him. Eli's eyes, that old system, I gotta fix you. Because if I vow this vow tonight, I can't turn back. My pastor told me every true man or woman of God has a Nazarite vow that nobody knows but them. Nobody. Nobody knows my vow. Nobody knows my vow. Nobody knows her vow. Nobody knew Summerall's vow. Nobody knew Wigglesworth's vow. Nobody knew Amy Simple McPherson's vow. Nobody but them and God. We are going to fly in the face of everything the old system says we should do to succeed. Because God has called our success blasphemy. Hezekiah said, this is a day of rebuke. This is a day of trouble. This is a day of blasphemy. Because children are come to birth and there is no power to bring them forth. That word blaspheme, a day of blasphemy, Dr. Stone means to flourish extravagantly in the face of. God said, you've got a name, you're well thought of. You've got plans and programs and budgets and buildings and pews and programs but you're dead tonight the old gives way to the new you have to understand what I'm saying God promised that the glory of the latter house would be greater than the former we have been given a measure of the Holy Spirit. 
that we are responsible to continue and expand to continue some of you bless your heart you don't even know what church is you've been spoon-fed such a steady diet of spiritual junk food that you don't even know what church is I remember the days pastor Pierman when our preachers would preach till they couldn't stand up and one would fall down and they'd carry him out and they'd put another one and they'd have to call them to preach during the service to keep the service going and men were called to ministry in the midst of a move of God I remember drunks staggering in those little wood frame buildings where church got over at 10 but the prayer meeting was still going on at 2 a.m. and the drunks when the bars would close at 1 a.m. would burst through the little doors of that wood frame building scare me half to death Sometimes they'd come in with guns, sometimes with knives, sometimes dragging a prostitute with them. But by the time they got down those 12 pews and to that altar, they were already sober, healed, and delivered. And some of them went to the pulpit and started preaching that night. You don't know what you've asked for. user friendly is over pack them in how many you got coming every plan every program you know what your teenagers need they don't need to be pinball wizards they need a move of God I told you last night a handoff is going to occur there's a transition and it's not comfortable if God tells me not to go to Washington I'll never go again but one thing I will never stop doing crying loud and sparing not Shouting holiness unto the Lord now and forever and preaching as long as I have breath the apex of everything we do must be to place the jewel of a soul in the crown of our Savior what we call growth God calls blasphemy what we call success flourishing in the face of God is that what he called us to do is that what he called us to do or did he call us to rebuke to reprove to exhort with all long suffering and doctrine I'm so tired of modern philosophy and psychology 101 with a few scriptures thrown in being perpetrated as the gospel God has had enough there's a glory coming no 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 there's a glory coming homosexuals aren't going to be able to sit on the organ bench they're going to start screaming out choir members that are fornicating I've seen it the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former I'm telling you stuff I've already seen I've seen men jump out of choirs like this till you think it would break their neck jump out of the choir and run and throw themselves over the altar and say I'm lost and I'm undone without God
Send the glory. We better thank God he hadn't sent it yet. A half of us would be dead. But tonight, there's a transition. Tonight, there's a cleansing. Tonight, there's a turning. Tonight, there's a leaving the old. Tonight, darkness gives way to light. Tonight, death gives way to life. Tonight, the old gives way to the new. If you believe it, shout! Give us some men and women that will preach this gospel and care less what anybody thinks about what they said. The glory is all around your feet. The glory is all around your feet. The glory of... Wash your steps with butter. Wash your steps... Wash your steps with fresh oil. Make that rock. Make that rock. Make that burden that's squeezing you and pressing you. Make that rock pour out oil. Receive a fresh anointing. Job had nothing and knew that God had everything. Wash your steps with butter. Thank him for the burden. Thank him for the fight. Thank him for the persecution. Glory in your infirmity. Thank him that you are weak. Therefore, he's made strong. Now scream. A rebuke at the devil over your house. Rebuke every devil from your children. You do it. You do it. Rebuke every spirit that you let into your house through HBO and Cinemax. Rebuke it. Rebuke the lust that's come into your own heart through the internet. You rebuke it. Rebuke divorce from your house. Rebuke a homosexual spirit out of your house. Shout, I don't need no preacher. I am anointed with fresh oil. Shout in a Pentecostal tongue. Shout in that Pentecostal tongue. Let the Holy Ghost let it out. Let it out.
of you have been watching me on the big screen, you've seen how revival came. It came to the pastor's family. Five services of the most incredible witness of the power of God. I saw Ashton in an orange suit carrying a briefcase getting off of the plane gonna speak in the boldness of the Holy Ghost Satan has come against this family I felt it coming pastor but I didn't know what to do how to deal with it I felt it coming the battle's been intense because in that revival if you watch the DVDs in the hotel I heard wake up Austin wake up Austin wake up Austin in that revival he came in a prayer meeting and had an intimate relationship with Christ in that revival he came to a school prayer meeting and was baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues for two hours but I believe God has something great in store for the pastor's son also And I just want to declare tonight, whatever came against this church and the pastor's family has been broken tonight.
generation that knew not the Lord. So you may be in this building tonight and you may be just and came into the church and you don't know what's going on. But I want some folk that's been raised up in the church to break out and give God a dance. Shout like you know how to praise it. Steve Howard right down there after the man of God preached Pentecost I said everything that was before the old is over and we moving into a new thing and God told me that he's what was hard before uh, it's gonna be supernaturally easy now <laughs> cuz we didn't close the door that the enemy had access to uh, and now the power of Pentecost has come back to the church. Your daughter about to get saved. Your situation about to change. Your community about to come up with a new anointing. We're about to see healings like we never saw before. Somebody give him a shout that he ain't heard of. Listen, listen. Now listen. As well as on prophetess tonight. Brand new anointing. Brand new level. I oh God, I'm so glad for tonight. I need it tonight. I need it tonight, Lord. I need it tonight. I love you. I love you. Come on, somebody. Clap your hands and thank the Lord. Come on, the devil meant it for evil, but God about to make it good. God's about to turn the enemy attack around. Somebody give God a shout like you know that. A victory shout. Huh? A shout that says I win. Come on, give him a praise up in here. Come on, come on. Shout to the moon. No, 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 no. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice with triumph.
Manga. 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 It's breaking. It's breaking off of your family. It's breaking off of your church. Every hindering spirit. You probably standing next to some people that probably really ain't moving. But God said, if you're not ashamed of Pentecost and you break out and give God a holler, your relatives will feel it in another state. Revival. I said it would be known as the International Revival. spoke this to me before I can we come through that door prayer was intense about this meeting tonight the warfare was intense but I kept travailing through because I knew God had given me this word mother I knew he had given me this word said a new vow that he was calling us to make a new vow Whew. a new vow thank you Jesus thank you Jesus pastor said it you don't know all of what I vowed to the Lord but I made him that vow in my diet that I wouldn't do certain things anymore I would give it up because I wanted to see a greater glory revealed in my life. And every time somebody wanted to give me some cheesecake, I said, that looks good, but it don't look better than what I see happening in the spirit. I want that soda. I want the Diet Coke, but I don't want it bad enough than what I got in the face of God. In this building, before I came out here, the Lord spoke to me and he said, this is the reason why 
we have to go through so many changes because like pastor said Pentecost had dried up in the church and so when Pentecost pastor battle dries up we have to resign ourselves to other tactics to get people to walk in the things of God we have to use trickery and gimmicks and prophecies to get people to walk in the things of God because their hearts have never been broken open to God the part of that scripture about the tabernacle where did Perry go did he leave where's Perry Stone he had to go part of that is what he said was that when the glory of God hit the house and the presence of the Lord filled the tabernacle it said the people started bringing gifts that were 12 miles long they had to make them stop giving because they were giving to the presence I said God before I walked out the door he spoke to me about people in this building pastors in particular there are 100 persons in this building that pastor and I are supposed to touch that God is calling you to give a thousand dollar seed offering and he wants you to run and give it not think about giving it but run and give it run now and give it while it's on me pastor can you come and sit right here on the side of this platform pastor if you will sit there for me I want you to hurry. If you're running this way, raise your hand. Come this way. Come to pastor. Come to pastor. If you're coming to sow that thousand dollars, hurry up. Because God said there were 100 people in this building. He has earmarked you. Tonight is your night. He said, hurry up. And that's the way you're supposed to move. You're supposed to move in a hurry. It's supposed to go in Pastor Parsley's hand. Hurry! Bring your checkbook down here and write it while you're running. Because God is on us. $1,000. It's not $100. It's not $50. It is $1,000. He said 100 people. Pastor Parsley. For the things that God has allowed him to expand in his ministry. God's going to release financial multiplication upon every person that walks in obedience to this. That's why I tell you, don't miss this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Pastor, you can start counting. 100 people, he said that will sow a thousand dollar seed offering into his hand hurry up hurry up WHC make the checks out to WHC hurry up 100 persons 100 persons and I want you to hear me because I know I'm in the Holy Ghost there are 3,000 people that's supposed to give a 100 seed offering jump in the outside aisle as quick as you can because you're coming to put it in the hand of Pastor Parsley. Hurry up. Get in an aisle and stand there. There's a supernatural anointing in this place. If you're in the overflow room, come from wherever you are. Get in the nearest aisle. If you want to sow that hundred dollars, get in the nearest aisle and wait for me. That's right. Stay right there. You don't have to obey God if you don't want to. But I know it's on me tonight. I know what he's speaking. I know what he's speaking. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are 100 persons that are supposed to give this thousand dollars. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Get that hundred dollar seat offered and get in the closest aisle. Hurry up. There are 3,000 of you that are supposed to give it, the Lord said. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This atmosphere is supernatural. This is on the heel of restoration. This is on the heel of a new vow.
this is on the heel of the men of God coming under a fresh anointing. This ain't no gimmick. I don't have to play games. I know what God is saying. I know what he's speaking. Hurry up. Hurry up. Thank you, Jesus. He said 100 persons are supposed to sow this seed for $1,000. You're going to put it on your credit card. Put it on your credit card. 100 persons are supposed to sow this seed for $1,000. Some of you say, I ain't never done that before. We ain't never been here in a night like this before. Somebody give God a shout right there. I said, somebody give God a shout right there. I said, somebody give God a shout right there. We ain't never been here before. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. All those people that's given that hundred dollar seat, come to this side of the room. Just keep moving to this side of the room. Move to this side of the room. Hurry up. Hurry up. The Spirit of the Lord said you're in here. He said all 3,000 persons is in this building. And this is a turn. This is an exchange. This is a supernatural move of God right here. We've never been here before. We've never been here in the land of promise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hurry up quickly if you're coming. Quickly if you're coming. Come all the way down. Come all the way in. Quickly. Hallelujah. Let them come down this aisle right here. Let them come down this aisle right here. Usher. Let them come down this aisle right here. Thank you, Jesus. He told me that all 3,000 people were in this building, Pastor. He said it's an exchange. It's a transfer for them. Because we've never been here before. We've never been here before. He said all 3,000 persons that he's talking to, he's earmarked. Are you in this place? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are 20 people. There are 20 people. And hear what I'm saying. There are 20 people that are missing. God wouldn't have never spoken and said 100 persons is supposed to give $1,000. And 80 people give it. How many we have now, Pastor? How many people we have now? 83 people. 83 people. 17 people missing. He wouldn't allow 83 people to obey him. If all 100 wasn't in the building. Come over here. Come over here. Nobody would have moved if it wasn't God. He wouldn't let 80 some people move. And the 100 people are not in this place. That's not God. That's not God. That's not God. That's not God. It's a vow. It's bringing something to the altar. You know what needs to happen? We need to go back. And some of us preachers need to go back and ask God for the mantle to re-preach the Old Testament because in the Old Testament they brought cereal offerings offerings was a part of it offerings was a part of the sacrifice it was a part of the service they did nothing without an offering they brought meal offerings they brought repentance offerings they brought sacrificial offerings they never stopped giving offerings because it was a part of the sacred worship Thank you, Jesus. To us, it's just money. In the Old Testament, they did nothing without a sacrifice. Nothing. Nothing, my sister. Nothing. They never went to the temple without bringing something to the Lord. Every time the Lord did something for them, they offered a sacrifice. 
Every time they wanted God to do something for them, they offered a sacrifice. Every time God did something for one of their relatives, the spot that God did it in, they would build a sacrifice. In the Old Testament, it was all about giving to God. It was all about your service to the Lord. It was all about surrendering everything you had to God. Holding nothing back. Holding nothing back. How many do we have? 103. I know God is not a lying God. He's not a lying God. He's not a lying God. He's not a lying God. Don't hold it. Don't hold the seed. It ain't worth it. All these people that's sowing this hundred dollar seed. He said three thousand. Don't let the devil trick you and take it home. It could be your last. But that's the seed he calling for. He calling for you only. Somebody tell God thank you. Come. Put it in the man of God's hand. Put it in his hand. Put it, it ain't going in the offering basket. It's going in his hands. Because the Bible said in the Old Testament, did he not say it, Pastor? He said the people would bring their offerings to the priest. And the priest would take their offerings and offer it up to God as a sacrifice. Oh, somebody give God a praise in this place. Somebody give God a praise in this place. Somebody give God a praise in this place. You don't know what's happening. You don't know what's happening. Let me give you the prophecy right quick. And maybe I can get you to praise him a little better. The 5 a.m. prophecy that broke, that went forth in the building this morning. I looked up and I saw money raining from heaven. And God said this was a day. This was a day that supernatural land and supernatural buildings and supernatural churches will be given to people. You don't hear what I'm saying. He said today was the day for financial independence. Somebody better give God a shout in this place. In all the years that I've been doing prayer, the Lord has never arrested me about finances. I would just pray about what God was giving me today from the time I hit the platform and started praying. He said the door was open. He said today was a day on the 4th of July that he chooses to turn the finances of the people of God around. You don't hear what I'm saying to you. He said it's, I looked up and it was raining down money. God said this is a supernatural day that he has already supernaturally provided things and plans that you have uh, that you've written down and never told anybody about. It. Your divine connection happened today. Your financial breakthrough happened today. You better give God a shout in this place. Don't be tricked. Three thousand. Three thousand persons. If you can believe God. If you can believe God. seed offering. I need somebody to hold it not like it's money, but like it's a transfer. I need somebody to treat it like it's a vow and just start giving God some praise.
and get in the line. You got to stick something in the man of God's hand. He came under a new anointing tonight. He came under a new vow. Get a big seed in your hand. Get the biggest seed you can and jump in the line. Shut up, my